Okay, we're back to walking around. Those plants you see there, the little bit tall ones, are mulberries. And I can't remember the name of this one. I'll put it in the captions if I can remember later. But we, these are good feeds for your cows. More mulberry. I like mulberries. But without rain, the fruit production is very small. Got mangosteen, mangoes. Can't remember all the trees, but we got a ton of them. This is all of our bamboo that we've chopped. Save us from having to spend money on lumber. All the sticks you see down there, we use for cooking. We made a local version of a of a stove. We put, it's made out of mud. So there we've got some dragon fruits growing. Again, no water, more firewood. Morning, guys. How goes the garden? This is where? By and by. I have to give them the bananas, huh? This is Jujit and Prince growing beans and everything else in here. Wow, the calabasas get pumpkins getting big. So we had to put some nets up around here because the damn chickens like to eat everything. How is everybody today, okay? Say hi to the camera. Say hi. It's father and son doing a great job here. You can see what we've done with all the bamboo. It's growing good, Prince. We need rain. So all, we're going to have lots of compost available. Bananas. Some of these are going to get thinned out, feed the cows. I'm trying to plant it in shady, semi-shady areas so that uh, the sun doesn't kill them. You can see where you walk that it's, the ground is cracked. This is where we generally burn garbage, but this is going to get removed by and by. All cleaned up. It's one of the last things to do. But I want the gardens first because... That's food. Anything to save a little bit of money. In a subsequent video, I'll talk to you more about the price of living and retiring in the Philippines. It's a little bit shocking. If you see that update, I'd encourage you to have a look, especially if you plan on retiring here. So we got a few neighbors. It's a Korean guy that retired, building up his little house there. More firewood. So if you look at previous videos before this one, when we started this work, You'll see how much we've done. So all of that there going pretty far back, actually. If you look at that fence, it's all the property that we own. It's probably 1.3, 1.4 hectares in this back area. That's the last little corner that we need to, to work on. More bamboo. We've got enough bamboo here to build a local house called a Kubo. Mango trees, mahogany. If you look through there, you can see where the fence line is. Basically where you see it cleared, just go right, and then this line over here, straight to the back. So this is a big area here. More to, ta more to do. This before the Baguio, I used to have animals back here and everything else, but the Baguio just ripped the roof off and everything else. And one of the neighbors over here, on the other side of that big bamboo cluster is growing chickens. But I think he's held back too because Feeds used to be about 1,100 for 50 kilos, and now it's 1,800. So by the time, as a farmer, you get done growing them, the profit is, unless you have nothing else to do, is so minimal it's not worth your time. So I have one more big clump of bamboo I need to clean. It's a nice little house back here to do something with. Wouldn't take much to remodel it. I used to come back here sometimes and just drink beer. Get away from all the noise. Oh, the deep well that we have here works fine. So there's water. And everybody's trying to do cleanup work because of the no water. And you don't want a big fire back here with all this stuff. So we're trying to get everything tidy. This is where we burnt some of the Kauaian bamboo. You can see it crawling. So we're trying to keep this fireproof. Mango tree, three more, four more. Five, six, seven, eight mango trees back here. The interesting thing living close to the beach is if you have a baguio, it throws salt water out. And with that salt water, you don't get very many fruits. I gotta figure out if I'm gonna keep it or not, but I love trees. Imagine sitting out here with a cooler, listen to the quiet. One thing about the Philippines, you always have dogs. Peter, shh, Peter. So we got another clump of bamboo there. Plenty of fertilizer coming from the cows. At one point, this whole section here, you see where the cow is, from this post to that post, straight through to that post, this whole piece here, I was going to subdivide and sell it off, can be, there's about six, oh, six, four, 
4,000 square meters back here. And as you can see, you're walking distance to the beach. Beautiful trees here. Peter! Shh! Peter's chasing the chickens. Peter! He's a golden retriever, so he's always chasing them. Peter! He's getting old now, so he can't really catch them. You can see the ground here, where, how dry it is. There's more calamansi, cows munching. Peter! Come on! Peter! Come on! So anyway, we'll make the final little bit here. Like I said before, the prices here have gone up everywhere. I've spent about a year in Manila. I couldn't believe it. Usually the provinces are immune to such drastic price increases. This is mahogany that fell over in the Baguio. So we just trimmed it off and they're very resilient. They'll continue to grow. I'm trying to leave this over here for the cows. Any little bit of rain will be nice. A couple more big mango trees, more mango trees. Here we finish. Here's the road. So this is a really nice little chunk of land right here. You can see the fence, hollow block fence way over there. That's the edge of my property on that side. So if you drew a line from that corner to that corner, that's all the road that I donated to the barangay for a road here. Okay guys, that's enough for this. Hope you enjoyed the update. Stay tuned for the updates to the cost of living and retiring in the Philippines. Bye.